Doesn't your body need glucose? Yes. Some cells need glucose. That's why your liver can make it for you. Thanks liver. Do you even know how amazing your liver is? Your liver does so much more than detox you from adventures at the local dive bar with your cousin Benji. Before you wake up in the morning, your liver has already prepared some breakfast for you. The glucose made by your liver, endogenous glucose, does not get converted to fat, because your liver doesn't make a ridiculous crap ton of it for no reason. You do not need a crap ton of glucose flowing around in your blood. Actually, you need very little. How much glucose should I have in me? At any given time, a healthy human being should have the equivalent of about one teaspoon of glucose, sugar, circulating in their blood. That's only one teaspoon, across four to five liters, 1.2 to 1.5 gallons, of blood. Compare that to sugar found in sweet drinks. Ponder that a moment. When your body suddenly receives the pick-me-up of 10 times, frappuccino levels, more glucose than it needs, your pancreas goes to war. It rapidly squirts insulin, shrieking for your cells to burn or sponge up glucose for storage before it causes brain damage. I bet you didn't see any brain damage warnings on your sugary drink. Speaking of warnings, are you confused over nutrition labels? That's exactly what the manufacturers want. They use a silly serving size instead of the whole bag of chips. Grams are confusing, but you can memorize this, 4 grams of sugar equals 1 teaspoon. Ok, it's 4.2 grams, perfectionists. Please don't fall for the con that natural sugars are healthier. Fructose or sucrose or glucose, brown or white or golden, from a tree or a beef or a vat, organic or blessed by monks, it's all sugar. Healthy body's total blood glucose, 4 grams equals 1 teaspoon. Can of Coca-Cola registered, 39 grams equals 9 teaspoons. Starbucks registered venti chai tea latte, 52 grams equals 13 teaspoons. 8 ounces of orange juice, 22 grams equals 5 teaspoons. 4 big medjool dates, 64 grams equals 15 teaspoons. 600 ml Gatorade registered, blue. 36 grams equals 9 teaspoons black coffee less than 1 gram equals 0 teaspoons even carbohydrates that don't taste sweet get turned into glucose sugar in the body bread converts to glucose whether it's the grainy whole wheat buns or the whitest squishiest bread registered there's a slight difference in the conversion rate glycemic index of fiber heavy carbohydrates turning into sugar in your body, but not nearly as much as you've been led to believe. Glycemic index. White bread, 75 plus or minus 2. Whole wheat bread, 74 plus or minus 2. Eggs, 0. Why recommend whole wheat bread to anyone trying to improve their health? Its glycemic index is higher than white sugar. Eggs are a much better choice especially now that we know dietary cholesterol does not cause heart disease. The only benefit to whole grains is they aren't as yummy. Can you eat low carb at a restaurant? Sometimes. If a place will let you make substitutions, you may still enjoy dining out. However, because carbohydrates are an ultra cheap plate filler, getting value as a customer can be an issue. If you simply reject the bread, rice, potatoes, noodles, and sugary sauces on a standard restaurant meal, you may be left with a very small snack that still represents the majority of the meal's ingredient costs. The pricier the meal, the better the ingredients. High-end restaurants serve meals with more protein. If you're rich, go for it. If you're not rich, you can still make it work dining out, even if it means ordering three side dishes. The staff is there to help and they have encountered low carbers before. Your waitress may squeal with delight and tell you about the 45 pounds she's lost on low carb, and how her feet don't hurt anymore, plus her eczema cleared up. What about snacks? What if you're out, and there's nothing low carb? As the wisecracking Canadian nephrologist and weight management expert Dr. Jason Fung says, your body is not stupid, and you will not permanently ruin your metabolism if you don't put muffins in your mouth every two hours. Of course, it might feel like you'll die without a muffin if you are still on the glucose and insulin roller coaster. 
Remember, insulin is not just a hormone your body uses to signal energy storage, it also makes you hungry. When you are starting low carb and trying to get off that roller coaster, it is important to plan your meals and snacks to minimize discomfort. But once your body has returned to its natural human state of metabolic flexibility, your body fat becomes food, so you're never without food. By the way, a little adipose fat is not harmful. That's the surface fat, not the scary visceral fat that can be on organs. If you have friends who are low carb, and they still have punch to pinch, don't chalk that up to a failure in the diet. They might be in better metabolic health than a person who is TOFI, thin outside, fat inside, with dangerous visceral fat on their organs.